how do you improve asking for help using coaching techniques and NLP? Um, hi from Venice Beach, by the way. It's one of our live training locations next to Bali and Miami and Amsterdam, Mexico. And we also have an online training uh, taped in Joshua Tree. So why is it that people fail to ask for help? Well, it's, it's because of a few misconceptions. Um, one is we are afraid of burdening other people. So we, we think that they're, we're, we're gonna be a nuisance to them if, if we were to ask for help, that's, that's one. Two, we also fear um, rejection. And so rejection, actually there have been studies that have been done and we're actually much likely, uh, much less likely to be rejected than we think we are. So it's kind of interesting. And, and then also, lastly, we, we don't want to appear to be weak. So, you know, we, we kind of always have to believe that we know everything and, and we don't want to be appearing incompetent or anything like that. And actually people <laughs> don't actually really monitor for that. Helping, asking for help is, is not necessarily appearance of being weak. Maybe, maybe it relates to vulnerability. But I don't want to go into that. I'll leave that to Dr. Brene Brown. So what you have to understand is that people are actually wired, biologically wired, conditioned to want to help other people, to, to, to be kind, um, but also to ease suffering and, and things like that. Oftentimes though, they're not necessarily aware that you need help. So that's the problem. It's not just asking for help that is the problem for a lot of people, but it's also like they, they seem to think that other people should notice that they need help and they, and they simply don't. So you need to be kind and <laughs> maybe literal about it. So one simple NLP technique that you can sort of use to condition your brain to, 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 to be more willing to ask for help is that other than the knowledge that I just gave you, is to imagine yourself um, on, a, on a movie screen needing help. And I, you could even imagine that there's other people around um, observing you. And, and you could roll this movie and you not asking for help, okay? And I want you to imagine that the you over there on that movie screen is a complete stranger. So it's not even you, okay? And so I want you to roll this movie and I want you to see the movie of you not asking help. Notice your own overwhelm, how you maybe get injured, how it maybe affects your mental health, how things just become really so much harder for you. And so, you know, and then once you've watched this movie and you kind of learned from that movie, then rewind that movie. And I now want you to watch a movie and I want you to m watch this same movie again and really get a sense that if that would be a complete stranger, how you personally could make a difference by helping yourself on that screen. So go ahead, actually imagine a second version of yourself and that second version of yourself is helping the version of yourself that is kind of desperate for a helping hand. And I want you to notice how that video looks completely different. And so once you've done that, I want you to have a real reflection, a real thought process about what the difference is between someone helping you and not helping you. And I want you to consider if this was someone else, and you can even play that movie as well, of it being a complete stranger, someone that you love or something like that, having your life, having your day, having your need for help in that moment, how you yourself would want to help that person. And, and, and think about and reflect on how that's exactly the same for other people who may not necessarily know that you need help, um, but that they would actually be delighted to help you. And I may even have to say, for a change. See you around.